Legendary actor Warwick Davis stars as Willow, a farmer who dreams of being a sorcerer, who must go on an epic adventure in order to protect a baby called Alora from the evil Queen Bavmorda, who wants to take over the world and can only do so once Alora is destroyed. And along his journey, Willow meets many interesting characters, including Mad Mardigan, played by Val Kilmer, where our heroes must face evil warriors, dragons and other monsters in this magical adventure movie which came out in 1988 and was produced by George Lucas and directed by Ron Howard. So today I'm going to explore 10 things that you probably didn't know about this fairy tale classic. So buckle up and get ready to return to the world of Willow, the movie where Val Kilmer turns into a pig man, something that'll haunt my dreams forever. Number 10, The Evolution of Willow. In the early 70s, George Lucas had first conceived several mythological stories in order to create his golden opus, Star Wars. In fact, at one stage, an early treatment of Star Wars was set around a community of little people. So Willow basically comes from a series of ideas Lucas had going for his mind for making Star Wars. In 1972, he created the basic story for Willow, which back then was called Munchkins. But as we all know, he went on to make his epic space opera instead. Lucas was put off making Willow until the mid 80s, as he wanted to wait for the technology of special effects to be right in order to create his vision. It was during the filming of Return of the Jedi in 1983 when the ball started to get rolling when he met 11 year old Warwick Davis, who was cast as the Ewok Wicket. Lucas spoke to the young actor about starring in Willow on Return of the Jedi set, to which Davis was interested. And by the time Willow started filming, Davis was just 17. Number 9. Ron Howard was looking for a fantasy project. Willow's director Ron Howard and George Lucas already had a working relationship, with Howard starring in Lucas's film American Graffiti which came out in 1973. During the 80s, Howard had turned his career around going from actor to director and directing movies such as Night Shift, Splash and Cocoon. But he was looking for something grand and epic, an out of this world fantasy movie. It was during the late stages of Cocoon's production that Lucas caught up with Ron Howard at Industrial Light and Magic and offered Howard to direct Willow, which Howard accepted, and Lucas felt comfortable in that his working relationship with Howard felt very similar to his one with Steven Spielberg. And from there, Howard brought on far and away writer Bob Dolman to work on the script. And so finally, after 16 years after Lucas had first conceived the idea of Willow, the production of the movie started to get in motion. Number 8. Filming Locations Most fantasy fairy tale movies of the 80s were filmed in the UK. However, Willow somewhat broke that trend and actually filmed some scenes within the beautiful landscapes of New Zealand. Yep, in 1987, while Peter Jackson was filming his low-budget horror movie Bad Taste in The Amazing Country, Lucas and Howard were also filming Willow. Not many major Hollywood movies were filmed in New Zealand back then. And after Willow, more and more Hollywood movies would turn to the epic landscapes and sceneries of New Zealand for future movies, such as the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Other locations that were used for Willow include Wales, North Carolina, Burnie Falls in California, and not to be leaving out England, some of the movie sets were built and filmed at L Street Studios, where Lucas had filmed the Star Wars and Indiana Jones movies. Lucas wanted to do some filming in South China, but he was denied permission to do so. So Lucas sent photographers to the location to film some scenery to be used as blue screen backgrounds. So all in all, Willow had a pretty international filming shoot. Number seven, Willow led to a real life romance. Willow starred a very young Val Kilmer as Mad Mardigan, a swashbuckling swordsman who starts off as a selfish jerk but ends up a hero, kind of like Willow's version of Han Solo. And he does a great job and I always found it heartwarming seeing him turn and help Willow on his quest. The movie also starred British actress Joanne Whaley, who starred as the warrior, Saoirse. 
the daughter of the evil Queen Bavmorda, who starts off as a ruthless hunter, but like Mad Mardigan would turn hero. Willow would see the characters Mad Mardigan and Sorsha fall in love. Well, in real life at the time of filming, Val Kilmer and Joanne Whaley actually did fall in love, and the very year Willow came out, the two young actors got married and would eventually go on to have two children. Oh, what can I say? I'm just a sucker when it comes to romance, and Kilmer and Whaley would go on to live happily ever after. Until they got divorced in 1996. Incidentally, the cast also includes Jean Marsh, who gave a terrifying performance as Queen Bavmorda, who just three years earlier gave a similar performance as the equally terrifying Princess Mombi in Return to Oz. Number six, critics are monsters. Willow features many mythological creatures, one of them being a two-headed dragon, Ebosisk, which actually got its name from popular film critics Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel. As a playful jab, I mean, after all, one of filmmakers' greatest fears is film critics, so why not poke fun at them, I guess? Siskel and Ebert would go on to be parodied 10 years later in the 1998 version of Godzilla, but their reference in Willow was much more clever and subtle. One of the heads of the Ebert Sisk is modelled after Ron Howard's brother, but I don't know. Take with that bit of info what you will. Also, the character General Cal was based on film critic Pauline Cal, a critic known for her no-nonsense approach, wit, and highly opinionated sharp focus. The irony being is when Pauline Cal wrote her review of Willow, she didn't realize the General Cal character was based on her. Critic-based villains weren't the only monsters in Willow. There was also this weird scene where Willow is on a boat and gets attacked by a bald boy who transforms into a giant fish. The scene ended up getting deleted. And yeah, the concept is strange and the fish didn't look quite right, so I can see why this scene was deleted. Number five, the music of Willow. Willow was composed by movie scoring legend James Horner, and the theme he provides for the movie is full of excitement and energy and adventure, and sounds very swashbuckling. It's nothing short of superb. It honestly sounds like it could rival the Back to the Future theme in terms of its ear-catching glory. But to me, his best bit of music in Willow is the slower, more harmonic flute theme. It just sounds beautiful and has a Celtic sound about it. And I can't explain it, but that bit of music always mesmerizes me. Horner had previously scored Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and Kral. And when he worked on Willow, he scored the movie with the London Symphony Orchestra, which no doubt helped with the music's grand scope and scale. In fact, the music for Willow was so catchy and well-loved, throughout the 90s, the energetic main theme would go on to be used in movie trailers. In fact, I can even remember watching an early trailer for Jurassic Park which featured the Willow theme. Yep, unless I'm being Mandela affected, I can clearly remember it. Number 4. Alternative Mad Mardigan Actor John Cusack apparently reached out for the role of Mad Mardigan. At the time, Cusack was an uprising star thanks to starring in Stand By Me and teen drama comedies such as The Sure Thing and Better Off Dead, but he lost to Val Kilmer. Although I really like Cusack, I don't know if he would have been able to pull off the rough gruffness that the part needed. But it's not all bad as Cusack went on to star in Say Anything, in which the image of him holding up a radio would become one of the most iconic images of 1980s cinema. Cusack probably would have been glad he missed Willow due to some of the onset injuries that occurred during filming, such as the scene where Mad Mardigan gets out of the cage. While filming that scene, the cage door slammed on Val Kilmer's foot, which left him with a limp throughout the film. And while filming a sword fighting fencing scene, Joanna Whaley accidentally stabbed a stuntman in the foot with her sword. Ouch. Number three, games. There are many game tie-ins associated with Willow. To start off with, there was the board game, which everyone who played seems to have fond memories of. In the game, players can either play as a villain or a hero, whereas if you're one of the heroes, the aim of the game is to protect baby Alora. whereas if you're one of the villains, you're doing Bavmorda's bidding, and you must try to capture Alora. It was a fun enough game for its time. Then there was the computer game, which was released for several systems, including Commodore 64 and Atari ST, which was basically like a role-playing game where you have to type in your locations, actions, and destinations. 
There was also a Willow arcade game, and not forgetting of course the Nintendo game, which was released by Capcom, of which I remember the game constantly being advertised in comic books at that time. It had a similar layout to Zelda, where the gamer gets to play as Willow as he sets out on a quest as seen in the movie, only he's on his own where he has to defeat enemies. Speaking of promotional material, Marvel Comics released a three-part comic book adaptation of Willow. Well, of course they did. Back in the day, Marvel released comic book adaptations of everything, from Raiders of the Lost Ark, to Time Bandits, to Robocop. If there was a movie that needed to be adapted into a comic book, then Marvel were the go-to guys. Number 2, Sequels. George Lucas always had sequels in mind when it came to Willow. However, due to the movie's disappointing box office performance, he decided to scrap the idea of theatrical sequels, and instead Willow got three sequels in novel format, known as the Chronicles of the Shadow War Trilogy, where Lucas teamed up with novelist Chris Claremont to adapt his ideas into a series of books, which would see the release of Shadow Moon in 1995, Shadow Dawn in 1996, and Shadow Star in the year 2000. So if you have ever wanted a Willow sequel, these series of books is thus far the closest you will get. The story starts one year after the events of Willow, where Willow is adjusting back into life as a farmer, where he wants to visit Alora for her birthday. And the story continues to a grown up Alora, who is now a warrior, who even slays dragons, where she goes on her own adventure of wonderment and facing dangerous foes. I like the idea of following a grown up Alora and seeing how the events of Willow have shaped her into a heroic defender. In 2005, it was hinted that there would be a TV series continuing the story of Willow, but nothing came of it, and Val Kilmer has hinted several times over the years that a Willow sequel might be, quote, just around the corner. But still to this day, nothing. Well, maybe theatrically, Willow should be a one-off experience. Number one, Willow was part of an unsuccessful 1980s fairy tale trend. When Willow was in its early production, Lucas and Howard struggled to find a studio to distribute the movie due to the lack of success of 1980s fantasy movies at that time. There had been many theatrical fairy tale flops, including The Dark Crystal, Krull, Return to Oz, Legend and Labyrinth. However, MGM agreed to distribute the movie, as it was headed by Alan Ladd Jr., who over 10 years earlier greenlit Star Wars for George Lucas when he worked at 20th Century Fox. However, during the filming, MGM had financial issues, which led to Columbia Pictures-based company RCA to purchase the home media rights of Willow. That's why when the movie was released on VHS, it was under the Columbia Pictures brand, but back over to MGM when released on DVD. Despite the fact that Lucas thought that Willow was going to be his E.T., sadly the movie fell into the same trap many other fantasy fairy tale movies did at that time and succumbed to poor reviews and disappointing box office numbers. Willow also had stiff competition with the likes of Crocodile Dundee 2, Rambo 3 and Big. However, the movie actually wasn't a flop. It made $57.3 million on a $35 million budget. It's just that it didn't bring anywhere near as much revenue as anticipated. But I will say this, Willow did deserve better. Well guys, that was my look into Willow, and what's not to love? What can I say, it's a magical, wonderful movie that seems to hit a chord with everyone who watches it. I haven't met one person who says, I don't like Willow. It's a great, fun, adventure family movie for the whole family. And if you're a fan of 1980s fairy tale movies and you haven't seen Willow, for God's sake, go check it out now. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I am so glad that Willow ended up being called Willow and not Munchkins. See ya!